Hi, everyone. I am Coral, founder of Tell Me Your Story and an author. And today I am very privileged to be sitting with Shikha Kapoor. I have known Shikha for a, uh, for a while uh, through social media. And I have seen her suddenly coming up with an um, update that she has joined as the CEO of Eros Motion Pictures. Before this, I knew her to be heading Fox Star. And before that, she was with Walt Disney. She's a media veteran, and I'm very excited to talk to her about something which is as exciting and as important today as women in media. Shikha, welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you have uh, managed to join us. Thank you, Coral. This is actually quite a first for me. I haven't done these many things. I've just taken a long break after Disney. So actually, it's my first after that break. So just tell me if I go haywire on the camera or I stumble a little bit, but I think we should be okay. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. And uh, Shika, I would love to go to the first question, which is very typically about you, something that I always wanted to know from you. That you have had a long journey in the entertainment industry. How has been your personal learning and evolution? And uh, what are those life stories? from your career, which you think everybody should know and learn from? I think, um, you know, um, I was destined to be here, really. Um, I got spotted by, um, you know, a talented bunch of people who gave me um, a lot of credit for my passion and taught me how to convert my passion into scalable results. And for that, I will always be thankful to Mr. Subhash Kai, to Johnny Skruwala, to Siddharth Roy Kapoor. Uh, you know, these are people who have anchored my journey very, very strongly. Uh, and I've learned a lot from them. Uh, uh, if you ask me what is there for me to learn, if there's that one thing that I hold very dearly to me, I think the fact that everything is so impermanent uh, in life and in careers and um, as fragile as success as much as it is of failure. Uh, and the one thing that I hold very, very truly, very close to me is failure. I think my failures have taught me more more than actually my successes while i have rejoiced most of my successes but it's actually you know the films that have failed the arguments that have failed the battles you've lost are the ones that really go out and form uh the creative uh a person you are meant to be uh it also has given me a lot of resilience in in my field and i think more than talent really it is creative resilience the integrity to be who are and to always be true to yourself and i think that one thing has never failed me and that is to always be the authentic person that i am and some people might like me and some people might not but i think i live with that and i guess uh, what it helps you do is that you discover yourself as you work across so many creative manifestations and i think i've had uh, the best of times here it's it's a great place to be and people who are aspiring to uh, uh should know that it's one of the most uh, uh you know it's 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 a creative uh, a place where there's no ceiling really and if you've got passion and if you've got the ability to really catalyze that passion into something, um, you know, this is the place to be. And uh, the kind of support that I've always gotten, the kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, um, also when I failed, the kind of courage that I have picked up is only because people have shown that kind of belief and faith in me. So I think the never lose faith and trust in yourself always be who you are don't compromise that for anything and anybody and hold your failures very very closely to yourself uh, that's a really really interesting learning uh shika uh shika when you were a fresher when you joined as a fresher i think uh, at that time what was the most significant uh, experience or probably the most significant shock that you may have received which uh, shock or uh, surprise, however you would like to take it, 
which actually told you that uh, there is something called life learning which you need to pick up as it is and not get personal about it is there any such i think it's it's a great question uh, however i think that every film uh, coral has been uh, a very very of very profound learnings for me whether it is about um, how you conduct yourself in the business whether it is about being detached from uh, you know the love that you have for a campaign or a film and to really see it objectively because finally a film can fail a film can succeed uh it takes a lot of uh, character to just you know detach yourself and to see it for what it is and i think uh, the one thing that i used to do very often was to be a very very solid self critique which even today i am but i think in some at some stage i realized that it's okay to fail like i said and it's okay that you know the the results might not be in your favor all the time and you don't need to be so hard on yourself so it's really a learning that i have grown with over time and every film coral every film if you pick up one film has an experience that has opened a new window has kind of opened up your pores to a new experience like there are films where you thought that you know listen um what can you do with this film nobody knows this guy nobody knows the actor it's all new and um, it's it's just it's a challenging film to do but i think those films really challenge the creative uh, person in you to be able to come across to audiences despite having not having the conventional paradigm of wisdom of you know successful stars etc uh, while the commercial films teach you a lot about yourself sometimes a you know a film can be a learning in relationships sometimes a film can be a learning about how you handle pressure or how you handle tough times so uh, you know there's there's not one specific film that kind of opened me up to a new insight but i think every film has been um a sort of uh, learning experience and i think with me especially my personal life and professional life have always kind of certainly intersected at many levels because film is such an important part of my life uh, i remember a lot of my personal uh, milestones in life through releases of films and you know it's it's just very organic like i remember when i gave birth to my child i remember when i got married when i got separated when i got you know when i went through you know extreme euphoria when i went through a bad time so i can somehow collect all these experiences through release dates and release environments and it tells me a lot about how much i love this place how much i love this uh, you know business of uh, making films and fostering such a strong bond with the audiences so to your question there's not one answer any answers and uh, you know i put it like this that every film kind of evolves you to um, somebody who could be you could discover a part of you with every film and that's how i have seen many film experiences manifest uh shikha many films uh, a long journey an eventful journey which was that moment of pride i'm sure you have had many success many moments of pride and there has been many things which are which you hold very close to your heart other than the trophies that you have received but trophies actually tell you about success that people have told you people have celebrated for you which is your moment of success which people may or may not know i think um, you know uh, there, there there are so many times that you look back and say wow we did it i think the most recent one was when we launched the brahmastra logo in the kumbh mela through drones in the sky and we always thought that oh, how are we going to pull this off and i think that was a moment of great pride for me especially for the fact that i um, have nurtured and put together a team which is the best in the industry and i am what i am because of the team that uh, you know makes me or is responsible for the work that i put outside uh, i think devdi as a film made me very very proud it made me proud of the work that i did 
on that film nija dhoni these are examples where i think the team and the hard work and the sheer ability to market and scale up a film has shown very very brightly so these are actually uh, you know uh, milestones that have that i would always remember because uh like you wear them as uh, you know an achievement through your life uh my first film uh, act in utv was uh, actually rangde basanti so to me that film is a very very a uh, profound milestone in my life um i was a big 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 obsessed amir fan and when i was working on this film um and uh, to go back to your last question it was it, it, it initially it was like kind of difficult to detach your obsession uh, as a fan girl with amir from the work but as you know continuously you grew within the campaign and within the layers of what is expected of you you learn that oh, you know you're blessed because you're, you're a fan of the world you're a fan of someone's work and you get a moment uh, in your life to really facilitate that journey into cinema or take it to the audiences so i think many milestones when i look back many of uh, you know of uh, done well but did not uh, and i consider them also a huge turning point in my life um like i i feel that the campaign for zoya factor was really really commendable but that movie didn't uh, you know uh, realize uh, to its uh, potential and people rejected that film and i think that was a tough tough uh, you know journey to look back on you know when films fail and you know that you put your best foot forward but these are also exceptionally important learning curves through that chika uh something that comes to my mind is uh, there are many films that you have done some of which as you say are very close to your heart uh which are the on screen uh, uh, on screen women characters according to you which you find are specifically very very inspiring from the films that you have worked upon and this can be totally your personal uh, Oh this is a difficult one I think uh, you know I I find um I I mean it's it's just very organic to say this but I find Nija to be the um, you know epitome of uh, resilience of grit of courage so that's one a uh, character that stood across very very strongly for me and I think uh while I uh, worked with Ram um for the marketing for the communication of the film i think what catalyzed my journey with him was also the uh, you know the, the strength of the character so i think that one woman character really stood out to me i think uh, and you know i'm trying to recollect because there are so many many films um let me come back to this question coral because i will i you know by the time i answer all the questions i log my memory down to uh, which other women characters really stood out for me that makes sense we will go to the next question shikha this will be uh, probably again another uh, question where it will make you think which is about the off screen women that you may have worked with or come across because uh, in the corporate space there are a lot of things that women can Uh, women can uh, influence and sometimes they are for good they are, sometimes they are for bad but then they leave behind a very lasting impression some of the very very inspiring women off screen you may have been you, you feel fortunate to have worked with you know i think i have been blessed with uh, uh, many many um, just uh, just people uh, around me who i take huge inspiration from and i think my inspiration comes from people who live regular uh, common lives like us you know people who actually uh, flourish in uh, living ordinary lives and yet being able to do something for themselves uh, so i um, you know there is no other woman that inspires me more than my mother so you know uh, the fact that uh, i've been brought up in very very difficult uh, uh, emotionally challenging environments for her she had to uh, you know part with me through my uh, schooling because 
I was in a hostel and she didn't want me uh, raised in uh, an environment which was not conducive to me. She's, so she, for me, has shown resilience and strength like I can't. Uh, the other person who I feel is a great colleague and great inspiration to me is someone called Gayatri Adav. Um, she was a former vice president strategy at Star. She's now joined, uh, I think, Sikona Capital. Uh, I find her usually, usually um, inspiring, again, for the sheer reason that she has this ability to challenge status quo all the time. And I think that is something that I have really picked up and learned from her. That Listen, challenge every nomenclature, uh, challenge every, um, you know, yes. Uh, and try and use the efficacy of saying no more often because every time you say no, you are actually rejecting a lot of your distractions and only acknowledging the things. I find uh, Gayatri to be a great colleague, to be hugely inspiration. I find Priyanka Chopra to be actually very, very, uh, like I'm usually inspired by her. Uh, I have seen her work, I have seen her journey, and I think she's someone I truly. Uh, uh, you know, get inspired by her, uh, just the sheer versatility that she has, just the sheer dignity and the resilience with which she's approached her career and life. I think that is hugely remarkable. Um, yeah. Uh, Shika, I will bring you to a discussion which is very, very, uh, I mean, oft spoken about and to a large extent uh, inconclusive which is about safety of women in the entertainment industry or media whatsoever. What do you have to say about that? You have spent a long time and you have spent a very successful time, if I may say so. You may, you may have met all kinds of people. Uh, how safe do you think is the entertainment industry or is it, is it any different from any other industry or it is just a prejudice that people have in their mind or it's just a preconceived notion which would make people say that entertainment industry would be very, very scary for I think um, the entertainment industry is usually an industry with a lot of spotlight on it because um, it is an industry that is represented uh, uh, by media more strongly than any other industry. So I think if one observes the cracks in any industry, the one that will um, reflect on the industry, uh, which is entertainment, will actually be spoken of more fluently and more commonly. So uh, while I do believe that safety of women is not an issue that is um, uh, uh, linked with uh, the entertainment industry, I feel safety of women by large is an India issue. And I actually feel very, very strongly for that issue. Um, so I I don't feel that it's more present in the entertainment industry than any other industry. Uh, if at all, I, I belong to the thinking that uh, this industry has been very, very safe. It has uh, it not only empowered me, it has also protected me. I have never um, felt unsafe. In fact, I have always felt taken care of by my colleagues, by uh, people I've worked with, with people I've partnered with. Yes, uh, I. It, it does not mean that, okay, fine, uh, you know, which means that, okay, this industry is very safe. No, I not saying that women's safety, women's safety is a larger issue. I don't think it's an issue about industry. It's not pertaining to one specific industry. I feel largely if our country was more uh, reciprocative of women's safety, uh, our law and order was more cognizant of uh, women's safety and made our country more safer for women, I think it would largely need that conversation than really trivializing it about one particular industry. Shikha, coming back to uh, the more recent discussions on uh, media and entertainment, uh, we were talking about Me Too movement and uh, of course it, it became a huge movement, then it blew out of proportions and then it lost the steam, an important, as important, uh, a movement as important as that. Uh, and then now we are discussing insider outsider. Without getting into the uh, dirtiness that it has brought along, 
I would like to ask you that today, if a fresher with big dreams in her eyes, wanting to join and make big in the entertainment industry, if that person comes to you, what would be your advice to that fresher so that that person is uh, mentally strong and stable to be able to take the volatility of this kind of uh, a profession? You know, uh, uh, Coral, I think that uh, the, the term volatility uh, for this profession is uh, is misrepresenting this profession. And I don't mean to say this uh, in any other sense, but to be very candid about one thing that this, uh, I'm an outsider and I have walked into this industry with no packing, uh, with absolutely no recommendations and references. And if I have come forward, it is only because people have acknowledged um, my work, people have acknowledged my results, and I have proven to be valuable to a movie, to a partnership, to a studio. So I, I actually think, in fact, a lot of my team members, I mean, across the years, they are a uh, they are only been people who have come from different walks of life. I have, in fact, encouraged so many people, uh, be, uh, people who come from banking, people who come from law, people who come from just journalist background. I have actually nurtured teams and teams over time of people who belong to diverse backgrounds than this. So, you know, you're actually talking to someone who's really not... Uh, who doesn't uh, really align with the thinking that there is no room for people who come from outside. That is one. I think the other thing is industry, 90%, okay, 80% of this industry is largely technicians and people like us who come here to uh, make something, who come here because we are energized by our passion. I think actually, and families form a very small percentage of the industry. So I think uh, if you ask me, what is it that I uh, would say to people who are coming from different walks of life, that if you are passionate about uh, the business, if you know that this is the place for you, I think give your dreams, give your passion a chance to be here. Yes, stand up for yourself. Never do, uh, uh, like I said in, in the beginning of my interview, be authentic to yourself. And I think a lot of what one does uh, or uh, manifests is a result of what they stand for. I think I have consciously always uh, had a compass that I have always aligned to that this is who I am and this is what my work will reflect. And I think that has never disappointed me. So, um, and this is across industries. So people, youngsters who want to join the industry. In fact, we need people from different walks of life because um, creativity is not restricted to uh, a city, to a fraternity, to a family, to, uh, uh, to a particular, you know, lineage and i feel the more we encourage people from different walks of life to come and experience uh the industry and to be able to give their own voices uh, uh, a platform to be heard to be spoken to be expressed i think this uh, uh we will only be a bunch of uh, you know a uh, creative uh, uh, catalysts coming together and trying to only further and foster a very, very strong relationship with the audiences. Because I actually believe that we're an industry which has the ability to create content that can get people together. In a time like this, which is so divisive, which is so ridden by politics and by agendas and people are drifting away from each other, actually Actually, a movie con powerful, compelling content has the ability to break these barriers and to actually get people together. So it is hugely, hugely healing. And that is one reason why I have always fallen back to my roots here, to what I've learned here, because I believe that cinema has an, a unique ability to heal people, to bring them together. And I think that journey has to be pursued by a collective of individuals, uh, which are not restricted to one particular strata. Shikha, that's a fabulous answer and a very inspiring answer. Thank you so much for that. And now my last question to you, that, uh, and this is something that I often ask to uh, leaders because, uh, 
that is this question is a lot about how you perceive yourself uh, irrespective of what the world says about you that is that if you have, a, have to create a visiting card for yourself which will not have your name or designation or company but it will only have three words that you choose for yourself those three words will be representing you which are the three words that you would choose and why uh it's a good question it's a very tricky question coral but uh i am someone who doesn't believe in visiting cards i actually don't even believe in uh so if you ask me what my visiting card would be it would be an empty white card because i uh, consider myself uh my uh contribution the value that i add to always have the intuitive power of a zero you know i have i'm a huge believer in that number i'm i feel that it has in itself the ability to catalyze a journey add a zero to a 10 add a zero to one more etc so i am of actually of the belief that spaces canvases journeys should be empty because only then can you come and interpret it again and i am a huge believer of reinvention what i will tell you today will change tomorrow if i believe that the three words that represent me or a word that represents me is water today i want to be able to tell you tomorrow that no uh, it's actually a sunflower because i believe that we as individuals change every day and if you ask me what that visiting card will be it'll actually be nothing it'll have no word on it because that's who i want to be an empty canvas all the time that's a fabulous answer uh, shikha and i am so happy that uh, you got time and you made time actually to talk to uh, me and uh, tell me your story uh, visitors would be very very grateful for the session Thank you so much for uh, making yourself a Thank you Gora. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.